Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for that very warm, warm introduction. And I just, first of all, just want to start off by giving more thanks, really. First of all, just to the amazing organisers actually inviting me to um, Belfast. It's my, my actually first time in Northern Ireland. And it really, really has been amazing so far and one that I'll definitely take with me. So thank you. And also to Maliki for actually hosting me uh, for the next, tonight, last night and tonight. So thank you to yourself as well. <laughs> So friends, um, our system is well and truly broken. You just have to look around you to see that. We've got rising inequality, rising poverty, failing public services, and yet more distrust of policy makers and decision makers than ever before. Donald Trump, the racist misogynist waste man, is somehow still <laughs> president. <laughs> the far right more emboldened and barbaric by the day. Parade streets throughout the Western world, breathing in discontent and exhaling bigotry and fostering hatred within our communities. Immoral arm dealings, sinister geopolitics and tyranny fuels bloody wars and conflicts in Syria, Yemen, Palestine, Ukraine, Mali, Kashmir and elsewhere, continuing to spell devastation, death and displacement. Our world's best scientists have confirmed that we've only got 12 short years to prevent exponential acceleration of catastrophic climate change and tells us it's literally either action or extinction and it's simple as that and of course there's brexit we have a brainless government that has bent over backwards gratifying a handful of fanatics caught in chaos between Theresa's turmoil and boris's buffoonery <laughs> both who should be charged with negligence towards the people of this country those of us lucky enough to have a roof over our heads and access to central heating have managed to stay relatively warm this winter. But processing the state of our country and the state of our planet constantly sends shivers down my spine. And I know I'm not alone when I say that. But inspired by the simple philosophy of doing things differently, I have attempted to use my platform to celebrate Sheffield and draw awareness to important causes and to bring people together in a world that's constantly trying to drive us apart. Yes, I do ruffle the right feathers. Yes, I do ask difficult questions and remind the sleepy establishment of the radical and disruptive power of the Green Party for positive change. And I've been clear all along, we must continuously question tradition dangerous policies and toxic elements of what we've been made to see as the norm. The reception I've received so far, whether that's on social media, walking through the streets of Sheffield, visiting local schools and businesses, or attending events around the country and in Europe, has definitely been overwhelmingly positive and empowering. The status quo has left us, have left the majority tired, in despair, and in wanting of something new. The truth is, the political establishment are not representative of our society. They are of ideas, out of touch, and sadly, out of time. <coughs> Poor representation in politics breeds mistrust and lack of respect. Conversely, diverse representation in politics builds tolerance and understanding. And if I'm being honest, one of the many reasons I feel I've gathered so much attention in my role is due to a failed democracy. Whether that be, if we look at government, would that be local government to national government? We've got people that we have elected as leaders who, quite frankly, don't reflect the people that they're there to represent. So even if we take the example of our government cabinet, who majority come from a certain background, majority were all, most of them millionaires. So how on earth are they really meant to understand what child poverty is, or to truly understand the devastating effects of austerity? One of the many reasons that made me want to stand as a council and put myself forward was firstly because I was tired. I was tired of complaining. But also I wanted to do something to combat all the rhetoric of fear, hate and division that I was hearing in 2014 during the rise of UKIP. And I remember telling myself it's either you get involved in politics, you do politics or politics will do you. And I remember thinking with so much turmoil around the world, if I can at least make my small part of the world, Sheffield, within Sheffield, my community, that bit better, make the people within my community, Sheffield's lives, that bit better, that's at least me contributing and having a positive 
impact in where I live. And it is with that compassion that led me to where I am today. And for those that don't know, I studied aquatic zoology at the University of Hull. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me any <laughs> questions on marine life, please. But um, it was a choice I took nonetheless. And my first kind of engagement with politics started there when I was at university. I came through a sports background and I just remember wanting to represent my small sports club because I set up an MMA club and I wanted to represent other smaller clubs. And then that led me to get more involved in my students' union. And I remember at the time um, deciding I'm going to go for student union president, but having no idea about what party politics was. I honestly couldn't even tell you the difference between left and right. But I knew I were, had my issues that I wanted to concentrate on, such as eradicating the hidden cost costs, such as signing up for free education. And I actually remember at the hustings being asked, uh, Majid, are you going to join the picket line? And having no idea what a picket line was. So I gambled and I was like, yes, I am going to join the picket line. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> I think I, that's what, I would have honestly joined the picket line had I known what it was at the time. <laughs> so, um, well, why green and over any other political party? So in Sheffield, and uh, my family, friends, those around me have always been Labour supporters and members. And Sheffield has traditionally always been a Labour city. So I remember during after 2014 thinking, right, I'm going to get involved. What do I need to do? So I remember having to like force myself to watch daily politics, watching YouTube videos, reading books and articles just to really get a grasp of um, politics and just how it works. And I was looking to different political parties and I remember asking my friends and family, why, what is it about Labour that excites you? What policies? Why are you uh, Labour voters? And it was always a case of, well, we know we're not blue. It was, yeah, it was just a case and it was like this identity that they really had strong. It's like, well, this is who we are. We've always voted this way. This is just who we are. And it really didn't give me much of an answer. And when I really just dug deeper into it, what really appealed to me with the Green Party was, first of all, they gave me hope more than anything else. And one thing that was really clear to me from the get-go was that the Green Party weren't trying to play the game, but they were trying to change the game. The simple fact that the Green Party were put in the interest of people before the party. And the simple fact that, look at your mainstream political party, would that be Labour, Lib Dem Tories, it's always a top-down approach. It's always the people at the top, the leaders that decide what the party policy is and everybody just has to get on and deal with it. That's why I guess you can have Tony Blair on one hand and then get Jeremy Corbyn. Whereas with the Green Party, it was always that bottom-up approach. It was people-led. And I felt like my voice had more of an impact. I felt like I was represented. I felt like my voice counted within the Green Party. And that's not to, of course, mention all the amazing policies that they had. The red line against austerity, standing up for free education. And most part, you knew where the Green Party stood. And that, for me, was clear-cut. And I thought, at that moment, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. So the current role of Lord Mayor has, um, has offered me a lot of opportunities. I have um, really had the opportunity to really highlight injustices and to provide a platform for the voiceless. Locally, whether that's slamming the autocratic behaviour of a Labour-run council who have got a big love for PFIs and who even attempted to imprison a fellow Green councillor and her crime was just speaking truth to power who display a disdain for democracy and grassroots politics, and who go missing when confronted with the much-feared spectre of accountability. And as I utter these words, I am sick to the teeth of being told, Majid, you're being a bit too political. Majid, maybe you should just tone it down a little bit. Or Majid, maybe you should just not speak on that issue. But I think what a lot of people fail to see is that I haven't got that privilege. I'm a black Muslim immigrant, and I feel like it is my duty to speak out against these injustices. We've got racism at the heart of the government, from Windrush to hostile environment, to go home vans, and to the dog whistle rhetoric surrounding the Brexit negotiations. And yeah, I just didn't think I had that privilege at all. And we all cannot afford to have our heads buried in this, and I think it's really important that we all do make that stand and actually use our voices as staying silent is definitely siding with the oppressor. And it's all nice and well, me standing before you here today, saying as Lord Mayor of Sheffield, and I'd be lying if I said I achieved that all through hard work alone. As we know, hard work alone doesn't get you far enough. There, of course, needs to be hard work, but there also needs to be sacrifice and opportunity. 
That's why me being Lord May is as much of a success about so many other people, including yourselves, as it is about me. Whether that be my mother who made sacrifices of having to leave Somalia due to conflicts and having to come to Sheffield as refugees. Whether that be my friends who have constantly grounded me by not letting me do stupid things. <laughs> Whether that be to the Green Party members across the country, UK and Northern Ireland, who have shown me nothing but unwavering support and who have given me nothing but constant inspiration, this story would have not been told. And it is so important that we support and give spaces to other people and help each other build and recover. That is a, that is a key to a strong, connected and collective movement. I remember I was the only green councillor in my ward last year and I made it my sole duty to make sure that we got another green elected. And I'm proud to say last year we got a refugee mother of four elected into my same ward, gaining a seat from Labour. <laughs> These glimpses of light amid the darkness are evidence of another better world. Through, the, through not individual stories scattered, but our collective stories united, we can and we will build that world. As Lord Mayor, I have always, always pushed myself to unashamedly speak out against injustices, standing against racism, hate and intolerance, and defending the most powerless and disenfranchised sections of our society. In each of my monthly campaigns, whether it was banning Donald, Donald Trump while the government rolled out the red carpets, challenging Boris Johnson's overlooked bigotry, demanding all groove justice from Sajid Javid, appointing Sheffield's first poet laureate, launching a UK-wide suicide prevention charter, defending migrants, calling the action against climate change, or making the case for an anti-war government. I wear my heart on my sleeve, and the writing is definitely on the T-shirt. <laughs> And I'm sure some of you uh, might have seen pictures of me squatting, circling around the web. The squat for me has become a symbol of defiance. It's up to us to create our own traditions, not conform to standards created by others, for themselves and those they wish to maintain power over. We must get off our high horses at times, widen engagement to suit the multifaceted reality of society and make politics fit for the 21st century. Every single one of us here today has a circle, some form of platform, and some degree of influence. Speaking truth to power, acting according to our capability and opportunity, whatever that may be, is our collective responsibility. Within the fight for a better world, a world with greater equality and tolerance, there is a niche for every one of us to help make that a reality. An activism fueled with passion, in charity, politics, or protest. However, it definitely is not easy. I personally keep a hate box in the corner of my office, filled with dozens of abusive and hateful letters awaiting at me at the town hall on a regular basis. And social media bullying culture leaves me, like many of you, exhausted a lot of the times. And in all honesty, I knew when I first took on the role that things were definitely going to be tough. And I actually remember having to give myself a bit of a pep talk before I took on the role, because I knew my approach was going to be a lot different and a lot of people weren't going to warm to it. But I guess I constantly had to remind myself that all these challenges, all these barriers, all these conflicts, at the end of the day, were all temporary. What was permanent to me was getting to the end of my tenure and thinking, what if? I wish I'd used my platform. I wish I spoke about that. So that is something I'm constantly having to remind myself that all these challenges and barriers are all temporary. And I get it, I can't please everybody. And if I'm trying to please everybody, I'm pleasing no nobody at all. And if you're trying to be everyone's cup of tea, you might as well be a mug, because that is just <laughs> not going to work. And, <laughs> and let's be clear, the current climate has shown us people have recognized that things cannot stay as they are any longer. From now on, we everyday folk must fill the political elite's present vacuum of ideas with our progressive plans and principal <coughs> solutions for fair and a more equal society. The past couple of years as an activist has taught me that there is always, always, always hope, even in the most obscure of places. 
And most of all, it's taught me three key valuable lessons. The first one being courage is contagious. Don't ever underestimate the impact that you can have on other people. As every time you take a stand, every time you choose to challenge the status quo, and every time you take yourself out of your comfort zone to do something differently, not only does that hope take a life of its own, but I promise you, you will excite and empower others to take a similar stand and make a difference. The second thing I have learned is that eating cake is a coping mechanism. <laughs> Listen, we, we all need our coping mechanisms to see the hope and stop us from going numb. For me, the mechanism is eating cake. Any form of cake or pudding. <laughs> like, my favourite is um, sticky toffee pudding with custard and flatjack and custard with even more custard. <laughs> I always thought it was a reasonable way for me to pick myself up and though my recent visit to the dentist showed it wasn't going with that consequence. <laughs> and the third and frankly the most important lesson I feel like I've learned is compassion, compassion, compassion. Compassion must be at the heart and centre of everything that we do. Yes, we are living through difficult and polarising times where we may encounter events, words and people that infuriate us. But we need to be strong, to be understanding, to work collaboratively and most important of all, to show compassion, as compassion is the ultimate manifestation of strength. And it is with that compassion and strength that I see shining from yourselves, was that we put in forward the first motion in support of equal marriage, standing the first trans candidates, running the first gender balanced slate candidates, and exposing Europe's biggest illegal dump. These are just a few examples of many that inspire me and others to continue to be more courageous. Change for the better is not only possible, it is probable. When we come together for the sake of our common prosperity, with conviction in our beliefs and committed action, with unity, strength and compassion, we can and we will build that world that truly works for all. And I know you guys have all got your local elections coming up in May, so remember to do things differently, to be courageous and take a bold stand and make your own creative traditions in that, you'll find me by your side. Thank you very much.